Hi guys, it is another snow-covered midwinter day here in mid-December. It is Sunday, December 11th, 2022, here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. So, I just did, just wrapped up the first of our two daily chronicles of the collapse by this fellow named Antonio Molonio. Uh, taking a realistic <laughs> appraisal of the chance that humanity is going to eradicate capitalism off the face of the planet, that we're just going to get rid of capitalism. So Antonio is no longer suffering that delusion, but while I was, you know, that story about eradicating capitalism uh, you're on medium.com led me to this story, this more in-depth story uh, from a fellow named no, I've never heard of named Casey Williams. Casey Williams is about to hit 1,000 subscribers. Casey Williams is a freelance writer covering climate, environment, and labor politics. He has written for the New York Times, HuffPost, Vice, and more. So obviously, uh, you can figure that Casey is probably an anti-capitalist. So what I call, the, and we're going to go back to 2019, so maybe, uh, you know, this, was, this, this essay is three and a half years old, so I'm, I don't know, maybe Casey uh, is no longer suffering a delusion that we can uh, transform the economy. And so what I'm, I remarked in the comments to him that, this is an excellent example of digging a little deeper into the onion than most people, okay? That people who understand that capitalism needs to go, obviously have peeled back a couple of other layers, a couple of layers of the onion that 99% of people uh, have not peeled back. So I congratulated Casey on digging a little deeper in the onion, and then I sent him back to the onion to dig a little bit deeper. And uh, Sandy, you will just have to call me some other time. Shut up. I guess Sandy is buried in the, uh, <laughs> she's probably buried in the snow too. So, uh, anyway, I had to send Casey uh, back, to the, back to the onion to uh, dig a little bit deeper to figure out how to reverse the great dying. The one way to stop the great dying, but I'm going to let Casey figure that out for himself, but at least... He's on the right track on this article, which he titled, The Great Dying Has Begun. Only Transforming the Economy Can Stop It. Yes, in their careful way, scientists are calling for an end to capitalism as we know it. Okay, Casey, what's on your mind three and a half years ago? Extinction has threatened Earth's plant and animal life several times over the planet's multi-billionaire history. During the mass extinction event called the Great Dying, around 250 million years ago, 90% of all marine species died out. Gone forever. Life is, once again, headed for total collapse. There you go. Life is once again headed 
for total collapse. While coverage, and remember this is three and a half years ago, uh, while coverage of last week's major intergovernmental science policy platform on biodiversity and ecosystem service report on biodiversity loss rightly played up the dire numbers an estimated one million species gone by 2050. What is truly remarkable are the solutions the authors offer in response, ditching the timid paradigms of technocrats these scientists are calling for nothing less than the total transformation of the global economy. Producing for profit has failed us, they say, and failed the planet. We need a new system. Only transformative change can stop massive species loss, according to the report's conclusion. That means overhauling the global economy to prioritize human well-being and environmental sustainability rather than the pursuit of profit. Uh, and, and so I, I, I guess, Casey, he wrote that without the slightest trace of irony. What was it again? Prioritizing human well-being and environmental sustainability. That is like prioritizing Sancho Panza and Chipmunk sustainability. Human well-being and environmental stability are polar opposites. You cannot prioritize both at the same time. You can prioritize one and take a wild guess what that's going to mean for the other. And I think we all know what it means for the other because we have been prioritizing human well-being uh, since we climbed down from the trees and capitalism is devoted to prioritizing human well-being by selling us these products we don't need. Anyway, so this is quoting Ingrid Vithrin uh, Abakers, Associate Professor of Environmental Science and Policy at George Mason University and a lead author of the report. Quote, quoting this scientist, quote, we are not addressing the underlying causes of biodiversity loss, which is the way we you know, humans, organize economies, production, and consumption patterns, our institutions, and our rules. We need to transform the sheer fabric of our society to become more sustainable. Close quote. Yes. So the underlying cause of biodiversity loss, according to this scientist, and uh, Casey agrees with her, is the way we organize our economy's production and consumption patterns. Again, you need to dig a little bit deeper into the onion and look at the we. Look at who is organizing economies, production, and consumer patterns. And you have your answer to what is the underlying cause of biodiversity loss and every other uh, problem associated with it on the planet 
it is humans. But anyway, this article has nothing to do with too many humans uh, on the planet. That has nothing to do with this at all. So I'm going to try to shut up. I think everyone knows how Sam Mitchell, card-carrying member of the Voluntary Human Extinction Movement, feels about the deeper layer of the onion. All right, I'm going to try to shut up. Let's listen to Casey. <clears throat> Today's great dying is happening faster than ever before, and its causes are clear. <laughs> anyway, love this factory farmed milk from the dollar store. Anyway, <clears throat> what were you saying, Casey? Today's great dying is happening faster than ever before, and its causes, the great dying's causes, are clear. Breakneck development by humans. Fossil-fueled global warming by humans. Industrial pollution by humans. Single crop agriculture by humans. As complex as these processes are, they point to a common culprit, a growth-based economic system caused by humans. Bent on wringing cash from nature has exploited the planet's ecosystems beyond what they can bear. Now Earth's fragile life support system is entering a death spiral that threatens human existence and which no one is prepared to stop. Okay, so Casey, while he doesn't understand the, the you know, the, the real, the real uh, calls of the great dying that's happening faster than ever before. While he hasn't figured that part of this puzzle out, at least he does understand that no one is prepared to stop uh, the growth-based economic system bent on wringing cash from nature. Uh, no one's prepared to stop that, and more importantly, no one is prepared to stop uh, Earth's fragile life support system from entering a death spiral that now threatens human existence. No, no one's gonna, no one's gonna stop this. It ain't gonna happen. Ain't gonna happen. Okay. Sancho Panza will marry a chipmunk and they will live happily ever after together. The lion shall lay down with the lamb without eating it. Ain't gonna happen. And this guy knows it. But, despite the fact, let's plow on. Evidence of an impending mass extinction has been accumulating for years, but this report paints an especially dire picture of the pace and scale of the crisis. Plant and animal species are vanishing at an unprecedented rate. One million of Earth's eight million known species could go extinct within 30 years. 
Biodiversity, the report's authors conclude, quote, is declining faster than at any time in human history. Wow. Let's see, there's, there's more humans on the planet than there have ever been in history. And biodiversity is declining faster than ever in human history. I'm really gonna have to, uh, I'm gonna have to sleep on this one tonight, but figure out why biodiversity is uh, declining faster than at any time in human history, huh? And with it, the ecological prerequisites for human life are dwindling. Clean air and water, healthy food, stable climates, medicines, and much more. <clears throat> Efforts to slow the dying have proven woefully inadequate. Governments will miss key conservation targets in the coming years. That was a real harbin to predict. Uh, yeah, the governments, as we know what's going on with that dog and pony show this week, governments have missed every single key conservation target they have ever set for themselves. <clears throat> Governments will miss key conservation targets in the coming years, signing death warrants for countless corals and amphibians and exposing up to 300 million additional people to dangerous flooding as coastal habitats vanish. That's because governments, businesses, and others have failed to tackle root causes of ecological collapse. Yes. <clears throat> the report's authors are careful to remain nonpartisan and lay out options not prescriptions for policymakers, but the report's conclusions, Visserin Hamacher says, are, quote, in essence political. We are changing the goals of our society. We want to switch the goal from making profit to living sustainably, close quote. So how are we going to do this? The authors of the report propose, quote, steering away from the current limited paradigm of economic growth, though they, quote, <laughs> they, quote, expect opposition from those with interests vested in the status quo. Do you think so? Given that growth, you know, economic growth and population growth, given that growth is the market economy's animating principle, this is essentially code for overhauling global capitalism and angering and angering some large corporations in the process. We don't need any angry corporations. Like the IPCC's 2018 special report on global warming, the new study's frankness is history making. After years of highlighting piecemeal reforms, the scientific community is now asking us to completely rethink modern society. Not because they're ideological, but because they are scientists. They go where the evidence leads, says Visserin Haymacher, quote, It is inevitable that you come to conclusions like this because that is what the science says. 
Of course, the authors also offer less drastic solutions. Deep in the report, they suggest that putting a price tag on ecosystem services can help account for and redress the cost of treating nature like a waste dump. It's an old idea. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to go in, in, into that. Uh, just for time's sake. Okay. The fact that such policies are not front and center makes a historic shift in tone. Pragmatic scientists and policymakers want fast, achievable solutions to urgent problems. And so for decades, they have resisted calling for fundamental change to the economic system. Even when it has been clear that economic growth accelerates biodiversity loss, reigning in global capitalism has seemed too drastic, cumbersome, and infeasible to count as a realistic solution to the crisis. And there's a very good reason for that. Because, because reigning in global capitalism is too drastic, is too cumbersome, and too infeasible to count as a realistic solution to the crisis. The way it is, the way it's always been, the way it always will be. Okay, and this now we're hearing from, uh, don't know if this person was part of the report, Jesse Goldstein, assistant professor of sociology at Virginia Commonwealth University. Quote, the overarching language of the report says everything has got to change. But the assumption is that massive transformative political and economic change takes too much time and that technocratic and technological policy-based solutions are quicker, close quote. But now it's the, back to uh, Casey, but now it is the pragmatic solutions that seem out of step with the reality of the extinction crisis. Given the deadly seriousness of species extinction, the most ambitious solutions have become the most necessary. And of course, Casey, Professor Goldstein, Professor what's her name that I can't pronounce, uh, never mention the most ambitious solution. The only solution. Never mentioned anywhere in the article. <clears throat> but anyway, they're on the right track. Just dig a little deeper in the onion. It would be reductive to attribute, uh, here we go, this is my favorite paragraph thing. It would be reductive to attribute biodiversity loss solely to modern capitalism. After all, humans have destroyed environments since they learned to whittle sticks into spears and clear forests to make farms. So Casey is on the right track. He's starting to understand. One more time, humans have destroyed environments since they learned to whittle sticks into spears and clear forests to make farms. Indigenous peoples in North America wiped out the mastodon long before they could hope to cash in on its hide. But capitalism introduces a ton
totally different set of incentives. Once plant and animal life is viewed as a production input, a cash engine, or an acceptable casualty of profit accumulation, it makes sense to wring revenue from life until it is gone, especially when competitive pressures reward making a quick buck. <clears throat> the report makes clear that today's great dying differs in kind but not degree from earlier waves of biodiversity loss. And this is what I don't understand, this sentence. Since 1900, the abundance of major species has declined by 20% globally. Uh, isn't the World Wildlife Fund always talking about uh, how uh, wildlife has decreased by like 70% since 1970? I don't know where he's coming up with since 1900, the abundance of major species has declined by only 20%. What century are you living in, dude? Anyway, and since 1970, as industrial production has exploded, nature's productivity has plummeted across the board. Species extinction is now, quote, tens to hundreds of times higher than it has averaged over the past 10 million years, the authors write. In the sixth extinction, journalist Elizabeth Colbert documents the dizzying pace of modern ecological destruction. Quoting Elizabeth Colbert, just in the past century, CO2 levels in the atmosphere have changed by as much a hundred parts per million as they normally do in a hundred thousand year glacial cycle. Meanwhile, the drop in ocean pH levels that has occurred over the past 50 years may well exceed anything that happened in the seas during the previous 50 million years. Close quote. Uh, note back to Casey, no matter how unsustainable our ancestors' societies were, ours is infinitely worse. <clears throat> Amid the dying, however, the economy booms. And uh, so I don't know, remember this is three and a half years ago. Amid the dying, however, the economy booms, crop yields have increased 300% since the 1970s per the report, and businesses are now extracting 60 billion tons of resources from the earth every year, and of course, with the, you know, the green energy revolution uh, blowing in that 60 billion tons per year that we're digging out of uh, the earth is getting ready to triple. Those resources, well, three and a half years ago, uh, run the gamut. Oil for cars, timber for buildings, precious metals for our precious iPhones. It might be one thing if biodiversity loss were paying for better lives for everyone, an unfortunate cost of making sure everyone has a safe home, healthy food, and reliable transportation, but trends in wealth inequality tell a different story. America's richest people have doubled their incomes since the 1970s, while working people have experienced wage stagnation and disproportionately suffered the effects 
of habitat loss, extreme weather, and food shortages. Given these trends, Gold, Professor Goldstein said, quote, it is hard to make with a straight face the argument that green capitalism is going to save the planet, close quote. <clears throat> Back to Casey, what seems needed is something far more radical, and the world's best scientist seem to agree, says Visserine Haymaker, quote, the discourse on sustainability is changing. It's now normal to talk about transformation, which is nothing less than a revolution, close quote. Yes, it is. It's, it's a hell of a lot less than a revolution. It, it, it's a bunch of uh, little dreaming lefties uh, talking about uh, how we're going to bury, uh, how we're just going to transform a, a global uh, economic paradigm uh, that is 100% dependent on, uh, on infinite growth on a finite planet. A revolution. Uh, anybody believing uh, that a few little lefties and some scientists, uh, you know, pointing out the fact that capitalism is killing this planet is, is going to keep people, you know, such as me from canceling their Amazon Prime subscription, ain't gonna happen. Ain't gonna happen. There's one way to stop biodiversity loss. We all know what it is. But anyway, uh, I have to go see what Sandy's up to. Get out there and enjoy bringing down global capitalism while you still can. It looks like the snow has finally stopped that is beautiful, I have to say. Maybe that's it for the snow for today. Oh my gosh.